Alright guys, here it is. The Hoka 1-1 Speed Goat. One of the most anticipated shoes to come out for this fall. Get ready, I hope you guys enjoy. Alright guys, it's Ross, Trainwise Fitness. I'm going to be showing you guys the Hoka 1-1 Speed Goat today. Give you some of my impressions on it. First of all, this shoe is bright. Something I really love. I've always enjoyed shoes that have a lot of, uh, a lot of bright colors to them, and this shoe fits the bill. Uh, I am going to start by saying uh, I got these uh, just a few weeks ago, well, really about a week ago. Had a pair of my, uh, another pair of Hoka's that I'd had. I hadn't even had 100 miles on them. I sent them back for a warranty repair because they started falling apart. And uh, Hoka, to their credit, stood by their product. Uh, sent me a gift card for uh, to use on their website to get a new pair of shoes. So I decided to go ahead and pick up these Speed Goats. That way I could give them a fair shot, throw them into my rotation, and uh, tell them what I think about them. Uh, so far, I probably have about 30 miles on these shoes. It gives me a good, good feel for where these shoes are. This shoe is uh, designed with Carl Metzer. Uh, kind of helped put his name, put his stamp on it. You can see it right there. The Speed Goat. Uh, not only is it his nickname, but it is uh, one of the toughest 50Ks in America that uh, he puts on out there in Snowbird City. Uh, so, you know, this shoe is designed to be tough and durable. One of the things you'll notice, this shoe has all new outsole materials. Very, uh, very durable shoe. Got some good flexibility done a lot of work on this shoe. This is built off the Rapa Nui platform. So if you're familiar with the Rapa Nui, you'll be somewhat familiar with this. Um, one of the things Hoka did though is they were hooked up with Vibram. I apologize, my shoes are dirty. It's not one of those reviews that you're going to find where uh, I haven't worn the shoe and I'm going to tell you about it. But uh, I've put this through the ringer, through some water, some mud, so that's a little bit dirty. But anyway, to my point, had Vibram designed that outsole give you a nice deep five millimeter load to get you some, a little bit more traction out there. And notice again two Hoka's uh, much to what Hoka is known for is that ultra cushion ultra thick shoe. These are really really nice uh, has a stack height of 33 millimeters in the rear comes down all the way into a 28 millimeter stack height in the front so you got about a five millimeter drop overall in the shoe. I'm a big fan of shoes about five to eight millimeters so that's a perfect drop for me. Uh, not everyone enjoys that drop, but to me that's where I find that I, uh, I run the best in, stay a little more injury free, uh, kind of staying at that uh, a little more minimal drop, minimal to moderate drop, but not quite all the way to a zero drop, and definitely not stacked all the way up at those 12 millimeter plus drops that I found in other shoes. So, again, nice fiber mount sole. They cut these really, really nice flex screws in here. Gives the shoe a little bit more expansion and move uh, and responsiveness on those trails. And you also notice that they kind of cut out some of the sole material here. That's just to help lighten this up. Uh, this shoe in a size 9 according to Hoka's website is about 9.7 ounces. So it puts it about an ounce over the uh, Challenger ATR. Uh, and again just a little bit higher, a little bit more cushion that Challenger ATR so you can go a little bit longer in these shoes. Um, these shoes are being worn by many, many professionals, uh, Hoka-sponsored athletes and others alike that are running 50, 100 miles in these shoes. Uh, I've gone up to, took these out of the box the day I got them, pretty much, and put them through a 12-mile run, and hence, since then, I've put through a couple other uh, 12 eights uh, in there as well. On my initial run, it was very, very muddy conditions. This Vibram outsole really, really helped to uh, keep that traction on the uh, trail there. Hoka also designed a really nice uh, synthetic, synthetic leather toe guard. Uh, something they haven't, that you've only seen on the Mafadis probably. Uh, something they didn't quite have on the Stenson ATRs. Oh, simply because it adds a little bit of weight and that's already a heavy shoe as it is. This can give you a little bit more protection there. Having this higher, higher midsole material does kind of help over the rocks and stumps and everything. That way you don't bang your foot into everything. You kind of catch it with your catch it with the sole of the shoe there. Uh, as far as the upper materials, it's a nice new synthetic mesh upper, uh, completely seamless. So it's not going to get any hot spots in there. 
has these wonderful welded overlays. Gives this shoe a really, really nice, fast look uh, just coming off of there. One of the things uh, that Hoka did with this is they stitched the tongue down. So the tongue it actually runs all the way from here and is stitched into the front of the shoe. So you're not going to really be able to pull the tongue up, but that also means the tongue's not going to drop down on you so much, bunch up. Also allows you to kind of tighten up here through the forefoot uh, and uh, really get a nice snug fit. Uh, before I got these, I'd done a lot of reading from some other people who had uh, bought them and reviewed them uh, on Hoka's website and a couple other websites as well. One of the things I noticed is people complain about these being very tight shoes um, or the toe box too narrow. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of the uh, ultra, ultra wide toe box. I really, really love that. I would love to find a combination of that uh, with a little bit more cushion and, uh, you know, between a five and eight millimeter drop in that wide toe box. Uh, but uh, Hoka's do are typically a little bit narrow. So when I got mine, I sized them up a half size. I typically wear a 10. I sized up to a 10 and a half, which was a good call because when I tried these on, when they came in, I had just a little over that thumbnail width that I'm supposed to have in a pair of shoes. So had I ordered a size 10, my toes would be hitting the end of this. And it would definitely not feel good when I bombed some of those downhills. Uh, so again, getting that half size up was great. Like I said, I took these out, ran 12 miles in them right out the bat. No issues, no blackened toenails, no, none of my toes hitting up against the front. Uh, this is a very snug fitting shoe. Uh, some of the Hoka athletes that wear it will tell you it's a dialed in fit. Uh, so if you are, if you do order it in your true size, you probably do want to go a half size up unless you just really, really like that snug fitting shoe. Uh, but again, like I said, if I had ordered a size 10, my toes would be hitting the end of this thing and it would not be an enjoyable shoe to wear. Uh, one of the things I noticed when I did, uh, I was doing some research on these. Uh, Ginger Runner talks about the shoe kind of feeling like when you stand in them that you roll, supinate a little bit, roll to that outside. Uh, something I did notice when I had these on, uh, but I didn't notice with running. Uh, again, I noticed it was standing still, and I've also noticed it in a couple of other uh, hokas that I've tried over the years. Uh, not a deal breaker, just something that you may or may not notice. But again, when I was running, I didn't notice that with these at all. Um, so, you know, that's just going to be a personal thing for you. If you, you know, if that, that feeling that you're rolling to the outside is a little too much for you, or you feel like it could, uh, cause you to tweak your ankle out there running maybe not necessarily the shoe for you but again this is a very nice shoe they've padded up the heel um, they've taken out those heel cups that so many people complain about uh, on some of the other Hoka shoes and again designed uh, with the uh, legendary Carl Meltzer and you know if he's gonna lend his name to it you know this is gonna be a quality product so this has been a very durable shoe one thing that I do don't particularly like as much is with running with these I've noticed that this de uh, debris screen as you can see is a little bit wider than some others uh, that are out there it does a little allow for a little bit more uh, debris and uh, loose dirt to get in there not a big deal you can shake it out um, but you know on some of your longer runs it may cause you to stop and you know remove a, remove the shoe shake it out get some of that dirt out uh, one thing I did notice on my very first run with these is I did not did not have this cinched up here in the laces as much as I probably should have. And I did get a little bit more loose debris in from around around the top of the shoe here, especially as I bring my other foot up and through during the uh, running gait cycle. So, uh, shook the shoe out, really tightened it up, sunk that heel deep down in there. Uh, not a single issue at all. But uh, I will tell you, this is a, a great shoe from Hoka. Uh, again, my recommendation, I would size this up a little bit. Very nice, light shoe. Another great shoe to add to your running arsenal. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the review of the uh, Hoka 1-1 Speed Goat. Again, a great, lightweight shoe got plenty of cushion support to uh, keep you going all day uh, for this 50 hundred milers again it's, it's gonna have a little bit of a snug fit so if that's something you don't like I would size it up a half size and uh, again that de uh, debris screen is uh, a little bit wider but that does also give it a little bit more breathability so it does dry out after crossing uh, water a little bit faster 
So again, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned a little bit. If you have any questions, again, feel free to drop those in the comments section. And remember to train smarter, train harder, and train wise.